I found the best lunch place all over Habarov city. Just look at this. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I do something like this to pay for my stay at somebody else's home. For couch surfing, it's rather an unusual experience because usually hosts don't ask to do anything, but these guys, they ask if I could help. Yeah, why not? I have a lot of time. Overall, I stayed in Habarov for six days, twice longer than I planned. Looks like it's a typical thing for me now. Recently I prefer traveling slower and don't get rushed anywhere. Thanks to couch surfing and its amazing community to make it possible. With them I don't need to worry much about accommodation expenses. There is a different price to pay for a stay rather than money. Here in Habarovsk I stay with a family of four, Dima, Olya and their five-year-old son and two-year-old daughter. They asked not to film them much, so of course I didn't. What I did during these days on Habarovsk? Explore the city by myself, then with Dima's family, and then with a new friend of mine, local YouTuber Natasha. Visited the outskirts and the industrial part of the city, enjoyed cooking Russian sweets, recorded a Talking Heads video with Natasha, and enjoyed the pure Russian forest with my hosts. But let me begin with the car day. Dima has a piece of antique in his possession. I'm talking about his dear Nissan from 1994, same age as I am. He bought this car a year ago for 50,000 rubles, which is something like 600 American dollars. Since then, Dima has one more thing to care about in his life, fixing that piece of antique. So one cloudy Tuesday, I and Dima spent the entire day with his Nissan. I'm not a car guy, but it was really fun to see this part of local life for me. The main goal was to do something with the engine. The side goal? Well, there are so many things to fix and improve in Dima's car. First we are getting to his garage, get some stuff and then go to his friend's car service. By the way, lovely garage. I'd love to have one for myself, not for a car, but for my hobbies and parties with friends that must be fun. Музыкальные инструменты какие-то. Барабан. Ты играл раньше? right to the outskirts of Habarovsk and here is the car service I told you about. Have a look at the tailpipe, something was wrong with that, strange noise. And the master says, Dima, go get something and something and I'll fix it. The rest of the day we were going from one place to another, to another, to another, and finished by fixing the tailpipe ourselves right at the garage. Well, Dima was fixing it and I was playing with my camera and my new outfit. You see, if six years ago I didn't leave Russia, my daily life could look like this. By the way, all what you see in this video happened about two weeks ago. Yeah, traveling and editing videos for YouTube takes a lot of time. But Instagram is different. Follow me there if you want to have more up-to-date content from my Russian journey. Daily posts and stories from Russia waiting for you there. And now let's jump into the city day. Yeah, that's exactly how I experienced Khabarovsk. I started exploring the city only two days after arrival. Not complaining though, it was really fun for me to spend time with my host family. I began the city tour right at the Lenin Square, and if you don't know where to go in a Russian city, just find Mr. Lenin and move to the most good-looking direction. You won't be wrong. After crossing the square, I took a wide street down to the river, made lots of photos on the way, had a pansa, a Korean-style steamed bun with meat and onion, a very special thing here in Russian Far East, also very delicious. 
Shortly after, I found the embankment and was stunned by the view. This year, Amur River, or Heilongjiang River as Chinese call it, was way above normal. The first level of the embankment was entirely underwater, and looks like the water level will get even higher. Looks kinda dangerous for the city, but it also looks stunning. I stared into the horizon and mountains for good half an hour before going anywhere else. Anywhere else appeared to be a nice park full of people right next to the river. I'll be back here in the evening once again, and now it's time to meet someone local. I was lucky to get in touch with Natasha, a young local lady who is also passionate about traveling. Moreover, Natasha is a YouTuber too, and she also creates videos about Russia in English. Thank you, Nikki, for such an introduction. Hi, guys. <laughs> we met today in Khabarovsk, and now we're walking along one of the central streets. Khabarovsk is a city in the very east of Russia. I wouldn't say that it's the easternmost city because uh, it's not, but it's, if you look at the map, you will be surprised how it's like in, in the very edge of the country with some other cities like Yurza Sakhalinsk, Nurpalas Kamchatsk. Khabarovsk is used to be capital of the Russian Far East, but recently this uh, position was uh, moved to Vladivostok for some reason. But historically, Khabarovsk has been a city connection, like the connection between cities because you can see that it's located on the Trans-Siberian Railroad and it's somewhere between Blagoveshensk and Vladivostok on, on, on your route if you are taking this road. Bye bye Natasha, gonna see you in a few days and record a video together. But now I'm being back to the river park together with my host family. They said it looks great in the evening and of course they were right. Three things impressed me the most there. A full-size whale skeleton from a local museum, such a great idea to make it visible from the outside. An outdoor pool designed by a Soviet lover of Greek culture, and a street piano waiting for people to play it. Amazing place. And then was the Nuts Day. The Nuts, a very nostalgic thing for me and I believe for the most of Russians too. Last time I had it was way too long ago in my childhood and I was so happy to hear that my host have everything to cook it. Wait, no more, just make it together. And then was the forest day. Fortunately, the last day with the family was Sunday and we had enough time to go somewhere out of town. Only 30 minutes down south and I found myself surrounded by pure Russian forest. Such a great feeling. I love Russian forests, it's pure nature here and today is Sunday, lots of people come hang out with families and my host family from Couchsurfing just decided to take me here have some food, I just got it for all of us it's quite a popular weekend destination for locals and we met many people on the way but the forest is huge and there is a place for everyone we left the car somewhere near the Snake Hill, our final destination. A quick hike, carefully there is no real trail and the hill itself is quite steep. And I could see the entire forest around me. Beautiful. On the way here I bought some food for everyone and this peak is literally the best place to enjoy it. For myself I got a tiny cheese, a sausage, bread and juice. Altogether it cost me two dollars only. Incredible value here. Unfortunately, we didn't stay long enough to enjoy sunset. My host had something to do with their relatives in the evening, so we headed back before the dark. They sent me back home and so my last day in Habarovsk ended. Tomorrow I'll be heading to the next destination, a city with such a long name. Try to read it. Blagoveshensk. That city is about 600 kilometers away, perhaps good for hitchhiking. I'll try it tomorrow. See you there and don't forget to hit that like button if you liked the video. And if you didn't subscribe to my channel, please do it now. See you in Blagoveshensk. What if I fell to the floor? Couldn't take